Have you tried exercising your dog with cavalletti poles and you feel like you're not sure what you're doing? Or have you wanted to try exercising your dog with cavalletti poles, but you're not sure if you're gonna do it right? Well, I'm Dr. Lori McCauley from Optimum Pet Vitality, and I'm gonna go through it so you're sure of what you're doing for no matter what type of exercise you wanna do with them. So let's start with spacing the cavalettis. If we have a dog who's older, geriatric, weak, we want to, or neurological, we want to start with our poles actually one and a half from base of the tail to tip of the nose, lengths apart. With the idea that they're like, huh, there's this thing in my way. One, two, three, four. They get all four feet over one before they get to the next one, right? And then as they get stronger, we can bring them closer together. For everybody else, we're gonna start by teaching them the game. And the game is you get to step over the cavalettis without clicking them, tipping them, pushing them, anything like that. And so that we're setting them up to, to succeed and not fail, we wanna have them when they start to be their stride length apart. You say, well, how do I know what their stride length is? I'm gonna show you. If our goal is weight bearing, a dog's had an injury or they haven't been putting weight on one leg and we want to strengthen one leg specifically, we want to teach them the game, starting with their stride length, and then slowly spread them out a little bit. Why would we do that? So that they're spending more time on each leg, isolating it, so that we have equal weight balance. If we have a show dog or a dog where we want a little more reach and a little more drive, we're going to spread them out so that they're reaching to get over that next pole. Say we have a dog with a luxating patella, we want to get them to pick their feet up high and strengthen the quadriceps, the muscle that helps hold that little patella in place as much as we can. So in that case, we want to have them closer together so that they can be picking up their feet and thinking about what they're doing. Dogs with cognitive disorders, we can also use this so that we're making them think. Now, if we have an athlete, what we wanna do is have some longer distances, some closer distances. We can have different heights. We can have different angles so that we can work on proprioception and balance and make them really think about where do I place my feet? Do I have to put two feet in one place? Do I have to step over two? So if our goal is cognition, proprioception and balance, we're gonna have all different angles and heights to really make them think. Say, okay, well, you started with stride length. How do we know what their stride length was? Well, the first thing I wanna tell you is what it's not. Stride length is not the distance between the front legs and the back legs. Think about a dachshund. Their legs are this long, their stride length is this long, but their front and back feet are that far apart. So I want you to get two measurements, and from there, we're gonna figure out what your dog's stride length is. The first measurement is gonna be from the ground to the point of the shoulder, where that little bump is that comes out. The second measurement is from the ground to the withers. And it's gonna depend upon whether your dog likes to walk or trot through the poles. So write these down. Now, if your dog is going to walk through the cavalettis, we wanna start with the distance from the floor to the point of the shoulder. And it's probably going to be a little bit longer, depending upon if they're walking fast or if they're meandering. So the faster the dog moves, the faster the dog walks, the longer the stride length. If they trot, border collies, Aussies, you ever see them walk? They're like, eh, they are not comfortable in a walk. They want to trot. For those guys, we're going to start with the floor to the withers, or maybe a little bit less. Again, the faster they trot, the longer the stride length, the slower they, they trot, the slower the tri stride length. So you wanna be consistent when you're taking them through so you know what their stride length is. Then you can video it and watch them. So if the poles are here and here, if their back foot sits right here, you want it to be in the middle, in the middle, in the middle. If the back foot is right next to this pole, then for each one, you want it to be right next to that pole. When you see that consistency, you know you have their stride length. Then, once you know what their stride length is, you can measure how far apart the cavalettis should be, and then take your 
leash or a rope or something that you carry with you and mark it so that you don't have to have a measuring tape every time you want to be consistent. And if you have multiple dogs, okay, take that leash or whatever you're taking that you're going to write on, mark it and put the dog's initial next to it. So if you have Chetty, then it's going to be a C. And then you have a Jovi, that could be a J. So that you can know for each dog what the stride length should be. Now, we talked about dogs with short legs. And thinking about short legs, I wanted to show you a video of Snoopy, who's got very short legs. And even Snoopy can go over Cavaletti poles. Little legs, adorable pig. If you have a dog with longer legs, you can actually use different length or different height Cavalettis. More different heights, more challenge. Help with the body as well as helping with the mind, helping them think through it. If you like these Cavaletti Jacks and you want a set for yourself, click on the link below and we'll send you to a location where you can order a set for yourself. They're lots of fun, color coded, and you can use them easily right out of the box. Okay. I'm Dr. Lori McCauley from Optimum Pet Vitality. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.